Hey everyone, this is Noel with creationeffects.com and in this After Effects tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a floating glowing orb uh, from scratch and we're going to make it move around this field and uh, at the end I'm going to show you how you can quickly add a variety of different particle trails to it so it looks like it's trailing smoke or dust or uh, different abstract shapes. Um, and we'll be using a tool from Creation Effects for that. Um, but the bulk of this tutorial will be showing you how to make this orb. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we've got some footage here. And if I play it back, you can see that it has some camera motion. Um, so let's track this camera motion first. I'm going to open the tracker panel. And we'll just click Track Camera uh, with that layer selected. And then uh, this just takes a few minutes. So you can um, you can sing a song or do some gymnastics or whatever you want to do to entertain yourself. All right, I skipped ahead. Uh, that didn't take too long. You can see all these different tracking points, which means the, uh, the footage is tracked. And if we go to this 3D camera tracker effect up here, we can click on Create Camera. And that creates this new 3D camera. If I reveal the keyframes, you can see it's it's got this these position keyframes on every frame. And uh, if I go to top view, I'll zoom out a little bit and you can see our camera. We're looking down on it and if I scrub through you can see it's moving backwards. Alright, next let's make a new composition and we'll just call this Orb Precomp. And this is where we'll build our texture for our orb. Uh, let's first add a new solid layer and uh, make it comp size. I'm using HD resolution. Uh, we'll call this orb and it doesn't matter what color it is. And in my effects and presets I'm going to search for turbulent noise and add that effect. Uh, turbulent noise is a lot like fractal noise. It's basically identical but it's newer so I assume it's better. And uh, in the turbulent noise effect we can change fractal type to let's do swirly and decrease the brightness. We don't need to see that much. Maybe increase the contrast. And then on the evolution property I'm going to alt click the stopwatch and we'll add a simple expression. Just say time times we'll do 300. And what that does is it makes the evolution property continuously increase over time. So we've got this evolving texture kind of like water I guess. Let's select that turbulent noise effect and duplicate it. So now there's two and on this one we can set the uh, fractal type to, let's do strings. And uh, we can increase the contrast on that one too. Let's set the blending mode to something different like difference, different, difference. Now we can see the other texture behind the strings. Um, so that, that looks fine. Actually, uh, on the expression for that second one, let's change the speed just to change it up a little bit. We'll do 200. Okay. And uh, next let's add some color correction. I'm going to search for the tritone effect. And for the midtones, we'll set that to a blue color. Next we'll add a CC sphere effect which makes it into this sphere. And uh, we can adjust the lighting. If you remember uh, in our footage we have the sun which is directly above and behind our scene. So we can try to match that. Um, in the CC sphere effect uh, let's set the angle to zero and then we'll just adjust the light height till it looks like it's brighter on top. Um, but we still want to see this texture down here. So in shading we can increase the ambient. And then one final thing in this comp that we'll do is we'll add an expression on the rotation of the CC sphere. So in this section here um, you can see that we can rotate the sphere on three different axes, 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 axes. and um, so I'm just gonna alt click that stopwatch and uh, we'll add a wiggle expression. So we'll just write wiggle and then in parentheses we'll do a speed of 0 0.8 
and an amount of 100 or so. And I'm going to copy that and paste it onto these other rotation properties. All right, that's fine. And uh, I think we're done in this comp. Let's go back to our project panel. All right, now let's take that orb pre-comp that we made and we'll drag that into a new composition. And we'll call this one orb final. And then in that comp um, on this orb layer, we're gonna add a glow effect. And we can turn down the threshold to something like 30. And the radius, uh, we'll increase that to about 30. And the intensity, that looks about right. And we can leave it at original colors and all of that's good. All right, let's select that layer and duplicate it. That's Command or Control D. And um, for that top one, we can set the blending mode to screen, which will let us see the bottom one underneath it. And uh, let's scale down the bottom one to something like 90. Let's do like 85%. So uh, we can see that it looks kind of like there's a smaller one inside the bigger one, um, but uh, you can't see it very well. Let's add a layer style to that bottom one. Go to layer and layer styles and we'll add a inner glow. Inside the inner glow, uh, we'll set opacity to 100 and the color, something to match that blue. And then we can just increase the size and we can see a little better now. And maybe we'll make that orb on the inside a little bit darker. I'll just quickly add a hue saturation effect and uh, we'll decrease the lightness a little bit. Okay, so uh, these are will be spinning at the same time. Um, but I think it'd look cool if... Uh, maybe the the second one, the inside one, would be spinning a little bit on a delay, as if it were, I don't know, suspended in liquid inside the big orb. So we can do that just by just dragging this bottom one over to the left. We'll do it like four frames. All right, that's fine. None of this really matters. I probably won't even see that in the final comp, but um, it looks cool here. And let's also add a, uh, a, a CC light rays effect. So we'll put this one on the top, the bigger orb. And we can just drag the center to the middle of our orb and uh, increase the intensity, something like 800 and bring the radius down to about 10. Okay, and just for fun, let's add one more layer. Uh, we can kind of give this a glassy look, um, like a reflection, and we can make it reflect our footage. So I'm gonna just drag my footage into this comp, and uh, let's add a CC sphere effect to this one. And uh, let's also add a spherize effect. Spherize. And we'll set the radius to 200 for that too. Um, so you can see without the spherize effect and with it, it just makes it rounder. More sphery, I think is the technical term. And uh, on that CC sphere effect, let's match the lighting to what we have for our orb. Um, angle at zero, light height. Oh, light height's fine. Increase the ambient a little bit. And I mean, this is gonna be all different for, for you. You're not gonna have this particular shot. Um, maybe you don't have any footage at all, and that's fine. Okay, we can try that. Um, I'm gonna set the blending mode to screen and uh, And no, I'm gonna leave it at normal. It'll just bring some of the color from the scene into our orb. Okay, let's close that comp and orb pre-comp. And we'll go back to our main comp and let's just bring that, uh, the orb final into there. 
All right. And because we have these light rays emanating from the orb, um, I'm worried they're going to be cut off at the edge of the layer here. So I'm going to quickly add a, a mask. And with the layer selected, I'll double click this circle mask and hit the F key to bring up the feather. Let's do something like 400. And um, mask expansion will decrease that to about negative 200. And we'll just hope that that works. And now we can animate this orb to move around our field. So I'm going to hit the P key to bring up the position property. And uh, we want this layer to be 3D. So I'll click that box. I usually like to add my beginning and end keyframes first. And then I'll add the details of the motion path uh, later on. So uh, let me bring it to where I want it to start. It's going to be way back in space here. Let's do something like 60,000 pixels back. And <clears throat> uh, let's have it come from the side of the screen. And it's going to fly up here and uh, zigzag around this road and then come up close to the screen. And then um, maybe we'll have it exit off here. And we'll just add a position keyframe there. And uh, let's go to the end. And uh, we'll just set all these to zero. And we can actually, I think, bring it closer to the camera. So it's close to the camera, top left. So now let's go to the middle of our animation. <clears throat> we can bring it way over here. And I'll just continue to go to certain points in that path in time and move it to where I want it to be. If you click on any of the vertices and hold down uh, the Alt or Option and Command or Control and then drag, you can uh, adjust these handles to adjust the curve of the motion. All right, in addition to these motion keyframes that I gave it, let's add some random wiggle to it. I'll Alt click the position and I'm going to type in a wiggle expression. We'll just do six times a second. It'll move about 60 pixels. All right, let's see what that looks like. That's okay. And um, I don't know if I like how dark it is. Let's, um, I can set this one to screen, but I think that's too bright. We lose all of that that dark blue. So uh, let's duplicate it. And the top one we can leave at screen and the bottom one we can set to normal. And uh, maybe decrease the opacity of the normal one. And decrease the opacity of the other one. I think that looks better. We're seeing double. Oh, it's got the, a wiggle expression on both. Okay. So we'll make this one our main. We'll delete all those keyframes on the, on the duplicate one. And uh, we'll just pick whip the position of that second one to the first one. Make sure I can see the position property and I'll just pick whip it to that one. And now wherever this one goes, this one will go. And uh, one other thing I'm going to do, uh, since I'll be adding some light effects to this um, th that are actually 2D, the effects are 2D, and this is a 3D layer, uh, we're going to run into problems linking the 2D effects to these, the 3D position here. So thinking ahead about that, I'm just going to add a, a null layer. I'll go to Layer, New, Null Object, and um, I'm going to make it 3D. I'm going to pick whip the position of that null to the position of our orb. And that's going to make it easier just because of some layer space uh, conversion problems that we'd run into, which I don't even fully understand. So I won't try to explain it to you. Um, you're welcome. All right, now let's add a, a lens flare effect to this um, just to brighten it up and um, just make it more interesting. Let's go to layer and I'll add a new solid and make sure it's black and uh, we'll call this lens flare. 
and I'll search for the lens flare effect. I'll set the blending mode to screen. And uh, um, I hate this one, so we're gonna change this to 35 millimeter prime. And let's find the flare center property for that effect. And uh, we're gonna add a, an expression. Remember this null position is going to uh, drive the position of all these 2D effects. So uh, we can start by pick whipping it to the position of the null. But we gotta doctor this up a little bit. You don't have to understand this, you can just copy what I'm doing. We'll just create a variable for P which equals that null layer. So P equals this comp dot layer null one, which is the name of that null. And then we'll do P dot two comp P dot anchor point. And that should do it. So you can see the uh, lens flare is now moving with the orb, um, but it's way too bright. So let's go to flare brightness and we'll add a keyframe at the beginning of the scene. Um, and we'll turn it down to something like 15. And then we'll go to near the end of the scene and we'll move it up to about, I don't know, 110. And let's also add a wiggle expression so that it's not constant, but it's kind of flickering. Let's do five times a second. It'll wiggle by amount of 30. And let's add a tritone effect. And we'll change this to a blue color. And if I ever say we need a blue color and I pick a pur purple color, um, that's not to confuse you. I'm colorblind and it all just looks like blue to me. So, um, so let's just add a nice blue color here. No, I'm just kidding. Um, not about being colorblind. I am colorblind, but uh, I can totally tell that this is pink. So um, let's go back and just choose a blue color. Let's see what that looks like. It's too bright. Um, let's also add an expression to the opacity of that layer. So I typed the E key two times fast to bring up the expressions. Um, so these are the properties that we've edited. Um, for the opacity, I'm gonna link that to the brightness. And maybe even less than that, we'll just do, we'll divide that by 1.5. So it's always a little bit less than whatever the brightness is. And maybe to let some of that original lens flare color through, we can um, blend this with the original just a little bit. All right, let's also add um, an anamorphic lens flare, like a blue horizontal streak. Um, we can go to layer, new, solid, and we'll make this orange. I'm just gonna add a, a circle mask right at the center of the layer. So I clicked and dragged first and then held down Alt and Command um, so that it expands on both sides the same amount. We'll just make a really long, thin circle. And uh, let's add a Gaussian blur. Turn that up a bit. Let's add a directional blur. And set the angle to 90 and increase that. Hold down shift to make it go much further. That should do it. Um, we're gonna reveal the position property using the P key. And we don't need to make it a 3D layer. Let's just, uh, cause I want it to stay lawn even when it's way back here. So you can see uh, we have a 2D coordinates here um, cause it's just X and Y. And we can, we actually already have some 2D coordinates from the lens flare that we set up. So we can just pick whip this one to that one, to the flare center. And that jumps right there. Uh, let's, I'm gonna rename that to anamorphic flare and set this blending mode to screen. We'll see. Let's link the opacity of the anamorphic flare to the opacity of this lens flare.
All right, uh, it's starting to look better, but it still doesn't look like it really belongs in this scene. We should be seeing areas of the environment brighten up as the orb gets close to it. So uh, let's try and do that. Let's add a, a new adjustment layer and double click the circle icon to make a circular mask and um, we'll feather it out something like 600 and then um, mass expansion to negative 300 half of whatever the feather was and uh, let's add a levels effect and we can start playing with these and I'm gonna try and make it so that just the brightest parts of this grass like these flowers here are gonna be brighter so the settings will be different for you um, let's just try this and uh, I'm gonna make this layer 3d and I'm gonna hit R, hit the R key to bring up the rotation and we'll rotate it on the X value 90 we'll do negative 90 and uh, let's move it down and let's change this to we'll see what add does that might be good um, let's also add some color correction we'll go to uh, We'll do a tint effect. And we'll map the white to blue, a light blue. And maybe black, we can map it to a really dark blue. I don't know. I'll rename this to um, ground highlights. And we want this to be positioned directly underneath the orb, no matter where it goes. So we got to do that using an expression. So I'm going to open up a expression box for the position property by alt clicking there and then hit the P key for the orb. And what we want to do is match the uh, X position and the Z position, but not the Y position. So let's see, uh, we can just do I'm going to do value plus, so that takes the current value, whatever we have, and it adds um, these values. First, let's set this to zero. So for this X value that we're going to add to this current value, um, I'm going to highlight that and then pick whip the X value of our orb main. And then I'll select the Z value and I'll pick whip that to the Z value of the orb. All right, so you can see it's directly underneath the orb. And now we can, and it's gonna follow it wherever it goes. Um, so we can just move it down manually because remember it's taking this current value into account for this expression. So we can, uh, let's go somewhere to where it's close to the ground. and we can decide how close we want that to be. I think maybe it's around there. Um, we're gonna have to make this layer much bigger in order to see it, so I'll hit the S key to bring up the scale. And we'll do something like that. And that's too bright, so let's bring it down a bit. I think I want it to be a little more blue. But let's go a step further. I'm going to link the opacity of these highlights to the brightness of the uh, the orb. Um, let's link it to the flare brightness. So I'm going to pick whip it. I'm going to whip it, whip it good, until its little hiney is red. I don't like how fast it's going around this corner here. Yeah, let's just change that real quick. Um, first of all, since we move these keyframes around, and uh, you can see if I zoom in here, these little little dots here, which represent each frame, its position on that frame, are close together, and then right here, they're spread out. So it's actually changing speeds as soon as it gets to that keyframe. Um, we can fix that by selecting these keyframes 
and then right click. We'll go to keyframe interpolation and in the temporal interpolation we'll change it to continuous Bezier. Um, and then uh, let's go to our graph editor and select position so we can see um, the curve. And uh, this is on value graph so we can change this. Click this little button here and we can do the speed graph. And ideally all of these should be smooth curves, no uh, right angles or corners. Right here, down here, is zero. Zero pixels per second. That's the speed. Um, obviously it's going faster up here then, and then slower down here. I want it to really slow down at the end. So I can just bring this down to zero, and <clears throat> I'll pull this handle out. I still didn't change that speedy corner right there. So, so let's go back to that graph and we'll just drag that keyframe closer to zero and that'll slow it down. Try and smooth out our curves. Much better. So I, we could keep adding stuff and trying to perfect this forever, but I think this is good for, for the amount of time we put into it. I think it looks pretty good. Um, so that brings us to our next, on the next part of the tutorial where I was going to show you how to add some cool particle trails to this moving orb. And um, we can do that with the Wisp template, which is a template from Creation Effects. Um, it lets you add 3D particle trails to any moving 3D object in After Effects. And there's a variety of different shapes and smoke and sparks and fire and dust and all that good stuff. Um, if you click on the link in the description, you can see the demo video of all the stuff I can do. But it basically brings you an aff affordable alternative to uh, particle effects and after effects. So I'm going to import that template into this project. I'll go to File, Import. So the entire template is now in this little folder here and uh, I'll open that up and I'll open up this Wisps HD comp. And let me just play that back. So this is the kind of stuff it creates. Um, we can look at some other ones. So there are uh, 50 different wisps in this comp and um, they're all you can you notice they're all doing this spiral motion and that's because they're all following this target one layer which is just a, a 3d layer um, if I unhide it you can see I created this motion path for it so they're just following that um, we can make them follow our orb uh, really easily um, after we choose which one we want and um, I might try a couple different ones but let's Let's do this light scribble one. Um, this one's a pre-comp you can see, which means it has multiple layers in there. So I open that up and these are the layers. Uh, let's just do a preview of what it looks like. So you can see it's got some fairy dust and like some lightning elements to it. Um, I think that one will look nice. So I'm just gonna select all of these layers and go back to our orb and uh, to paste them down at the bottom, I'll select that bottom layer and paste. And now we need to tell it, uh, you can see we got some expression errors. We just need to tell it which layer to follow, um, which it's gonna be this orb main layer. So I'll select each of these layers and in the effect controls panel, the very first control is target layer. We're gonna set that to orb main and we'll do that for each layer. And every animation is different, so it might not look uh, like you expect as soon as you apply it. Um, but there are lots of customization options on these and each layer is actually a separate wisp. Um, so here we have the main tail and that's what that looks like. So you can just select that layer and then in the effect controls panel you can see we've got um, a bunch of different options. All of these that say controls, you can affect the look of that. Um, oftentimes the default settings are perfect. For this animation I know because I've already tried it because the orb goes so far back in space, um, I want to make a few adjustments. All 
Okay. <clears throat> I fast forwarded and because um, I, I was making a bunch of changes. I basically just changed the size, the particle size, and uh, the speed of the lightning um, <clears throat> just so it would all be more visible. I'm not sure what it's going to look like yet, but we can test it out. Yeah, I'm not crazy about the, the falling dust there, but um, that's just one example. You can mix and match multiple wisps. Um, you get the idea. Lots of different looks, easy to apply, and then lots of customization options. Um, and you can do all sorts of cool things with particles and trailing particles in After Effects. Um, I hope you liked the tutorial. Um, if you enjoyed watching that, please subscribe because I plan on doing a lot more tutorials from now on. Also be sure to check out creationeffects.com. We have all sorts of creative uh, visual effects solutions there. If you want uh, flocks of birds to put in your footage or custom swarms of insects or schools of fish, we have that. If you want to turn your footage into something else like VHS effects or old film, um, or lo lots of different types of art effects. Um, we've got plenty of that. We've got lots of custom animations like 3D books, which you can customize with your own content. Um, 3D oceans, growing flourishes, lots of text effects, and a whole lot more, all for Adobe After Effects. That's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.